everyone! It's me again, and it's been a while since I've been in my house to film a video. And so, I was walking home today, and I went to the CU. I'm just curious. I'm always curious to see what's new, what's happening. And uh, they had a Nege Mani Chanlon. God, I miss saying Man... Ch man... Sorry, Nege Manlon. Uh, but 12,000 is not bad. So, here's the first two. This is the Wan Highball. This is the Yuja flavor. This is like what I am going to say is like their standard flavor, I suppose. Um, Yuja is fairly common in a whole lot of stuff, especially with highballs. Uh, so, while it's not a highball in the sense that it's just soju and uh, sparkling water and maybe some really minor stuff, there is flavoring here. Again, that said, Yuja is pretty standard. Uh, I have another one soju highball. Let's get this poured. Uh, I was going to do this outside, actually, and I went to the park across the street, and I was going to just brave the heat, and that would be part of the, part of the uh, experience of drinking a cold drink in the park. The cicadas wouldn't shut the hell up. And uh, I couldn't film here until the sun went down coming through this window, so it's later now. <sighs> C'est la vie. So, let's go through the ingredients quick, because I did look at this before. Uh, so, water. Jungryu Shik Soju, so that's the soju part, and it advertises rice, Kukne San, 100%. And then I love this highball base dash Y, bracket, sugar, uh, fructose, uh, citric acid, and then refined salt, which again advertises as Korean. Then there's the natural flavoring, which is the yuja, and then it has like fructose again and then it has the carbonation and citric acid again. So the soju base has that, and then they add that again, that's not part of the prepackaged, uh, sorry, highball base. Highball base dash Y. <clears throat> so. This was three bucks. There was a bit of a, not unpleasantness to it, the yuja hits really strong first, and then goes away really quickly. I wish it lingered a bit more and didn't come in so strong at the beginning. Not the end of the world, but it is, on the first sip, it's quite like, oof. Yuja is one of those citruses, too, that's not like, and this could be just because I'm not used to eating it throughout my whole life. It is, it's almost like a combination of the peels of all the other citrus foods. It has that, like, there's a harshness to it. It's not terribly unpleasant, but it does really remind me of like when you kind of eat the peel of an orange and you're like, ooh, what is that? It's like orange-like, but it still has that peeliness to it. Hmm. Not bad. It's not amazing. I do like the one soju. I made a video on that. That's actually a really popular video of mine. Let's do the next one, though. This is the uh, Soul Knight, which ha they have like a double distilled plum liqueur. It's actually quite nice, and it won't break the bank either. Um, it's fairly strong. I can't remember. It's about 23 or something, tw 22 and a half, 24, somewhere in there. Uh, it's a double distilled plum liqueur. This is their gin and tonic. Um, so they, uh, I mean, they're distilling the plum liqueur anyway, so it's not like they're unfamiliar with distilling. So if they've chosen to do a gin, that said, I've never seen their gin anywhere. So they might just be making kind of, not a cheap gin, but a fairly standard, normal gin just to put in here. I'll have to keep my eyes open though. Um, well, this one uses fructose. They've chosen for this one, uh, again, water and then gin monek. Uh, Meishil, oh wow, so it is a plum gin? <sighs> okay, and those are Korean. And then they have uh, the juniper, which is also Korean. And then the carbonation, and then oligodang, which is glucose, not fructose. And then pododang, which is other glucoses. Ah, no, oligodang is oligosaccharides, sorry. And then the pododang is glucose. And then they have a stevia that's been enzymatically treated. I don't know what that means, but uh, it does have stevia in it, which again, I'm not a massive fan. We talked about this in my Makali class ages ago. Stevia is a sweetener, yes, and it does add a, it does add a sweetness to it, but those with, <laughs> my palate's not that refined, but anyone with even a minorly refined palate who becomes f familiar with stevia immediately goes, that's stevia. And it has its own taste that gets added to whatever you're trying to sweeten, which if you're cutting calories and you don't care that much, 
fine, but if you're looking for like a purity of flavor or, you know, if you don't want that stevia in, a, in there, it does come through. Like, I mean, I could just chug this and then use the same glass. Uh, I don't exactly want to chug a highball. <laughs> so, we'll enjoy these, but in due time. But here's the other one. They're all going to be pretty clear. But I will, I suppose, hold up both glasses to the camera and we'll see if there's any sort of color difference in these. <sighs> I'm gonna say no. They could be the glass. This glass is a lot thicker, so please keep that in mind. Like, considerably thicker. Um, well, even that, you can see my hand is not very clear and then my hand's really clear through this one. That's just the thickness of the glass. But as far as color goes, I read you the ingredients. They're gonna be fairly bare of most stuff. Especially since they're using like natural flavoring for the yuja in this one, right? You're not gonna get a yellowness from it. It's gonna be a very tiny amount of concentrated natural flavoring that they add, right? They're trying to cut costs. It's three bucks, right? They're not pureeing yuja from the farm and then putting it in there. It's not happening. Is it my nose? Or is it me? My God, I have to stick my nose like... I, I, the bubbles are going in my nose. That's how close it was. Very faint. Like, with gin, especially with the juniper. I've talked about juniper on the channel before. Like, it ain't subtle. And when you get that juniper, or you're supposed to, there's no mistaking it. There's a bit of sweetness, but there's no juniper. Mmm, that sweetness is the plum. Yeah, I've smelled their double distilled plum liqueur before. Again, recommended. If you're at the CU and you want something a bit nicer than the soju, but you don't want to get like a $12 bottle of like Haijinro or um, uh, Huayo, the plum liqueur does the trick. When you want something that actually tastes good, but you don't want to spend 12 bucks, you spend six and not 180. infinitely more enjoyable than the Wan Soju one. This one, it's mellower. Um, the carbonation isn't as harsh, and there isn't any sort of yuja punch. Again, I speak as a foreigner, right? Yuja's not in my wheelhouse. Juniper, <laughs> it's more my, <laughs> it's like the harshest flavoring ever. It's nice, but you know, one could argue that juniper is a lot more, uh, but again, it doesn't come through a lot in this. Um, they really do advertise the double distilled plum spirit next to the gin and tonic part. They might not want... Ah, no, but the gin and tonic's first and foremost, right? Yeah, yeah, as drinkable as this is. I did a video on the Sonbi gin from Toki Soju. That tastes like a proper gin. This is interesting, but they're advertising it as a gin and tonic highball, and I just don't get that juniperness that I want from like a gin and tonic, right? Gin and tonics are dead simple. Tonic water is pretty dead simple too. There's a few things in there. But you know, let the gin sing. <laughs> gin sing. Anyway, let the gin sing, but don't have a shot of it, right? Shots of gins, no one does that, right? You do want to water it down. Um, but it is lacking in that expectation department, even though I do enjoy this. Um, they're doing something interesting with a plum gin, so hats off to them. Uh, can design's good too. I like the simplicity, black and white. Yeah. Still two more though. 